What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Jerio back in another video, back in another action. Today we got Chin Pack versus Asian Assassins. Toronto's deadliest gang war. The city of Toronto is the capital city of Ontario with a recorded population of over 2 million people. It is the most populated Dang. city in all of Canada and the fourth most populated city in the United States. That Toronto is also it, recognized as one of the most multicultural and cosmopolitan cities in the world. And I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with the joke about how friendly Canadians can be. But in this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of Canada's most deadliest gang beefs that stems all the way back to the early 2000s. The Chin Pack are a gang based out of Toronto's Regent Park, which is a public housing project located never heard of the in Asian downtown Toronto. Before. They also have an ongoing alliance with- See, I'm literally scrolling through YouTube trying to find a video react to. I see Asian gang in Toronto. I'm like, what? Asian gang? You know, we gotta get and react to it. Another gang called the Sip Duds, who also reside within Regent Park and have been in a deadly beef with another gang called the Project Originals and the Asian Assassins. Freedom on Raid started a two GTA street gangs this morning. Police busted down doors, executing dozens of search warrants. Well, we all There's stay doing the raids out there. Um, three search warrants executed in Toronto, across God, the GTA, hey. mostly in Toronto. 50 arrests, including six at this Liberty Village condo. Investigations were dubbed Projects RX and Battery. The targets, two rival gangs They're called the Six woman. Thugs and the Asian Assassins. Both gangs linked to a number of shootings, according to police. The Asian Assassins are located in the Alexandria Park area, which is only about a 10 minute drive from Regent Park. The Asian Assassins nothing. and the Chin Pack have been getting busy in the streets since the year 2011. Although the origins of the beef are up for speculation, the beef is rumored to have stemmed from jailhouse. Now, like, are they like, you know, the Asian gangs, do y'all get into it with, uh, you know what I'm saying? The black folks, let me know in the comment section down below. Is that a problem? You know what I'm saying? Bites and has since or is it just like you know what I'm saying they drop in they the still got their own race. But before we get into the video, don't forget to get on y'all cool with each other if too. You want me to cover anything in specific? I also have a PO box address where you can send me stuff to promote. So if that interests you in any way, go ahead and message me on IG. I'll go ahead and get you that PO box address. I also just started my Discord server and we built quite the community. And shout out to everybody that has joined so far. And I actually wanted to give them an actual shout out. I just want to tap into the Discord really quick. Just give you guys a quick idea of what we got going on here so yeah we got a couple chat rooms we got the general chat we got a total i try of, uh, to start a discord 11 people but online right now I shout out to hustling them. adrian chase vegas daz guacamole juicy Mrak Alope. i'm sorry i probably mispronounced that spoon fork stewie vinley bomb spoon fork and i can't even pronounce that last name but big shout out to everybody that came to the Discord. So if you guys are just looking for a place to come chill, talk some shit about So games, what is a Discord? Car, also just like a messenger thing? Memes, or whatever the case is, come check out the Discord server. But without oh, further ado, is. let's get into I thought my face was supposed to be I on Discord. I wanted to create a line of product that focus on the body as a whole. So I might have to start a Discord. I know it was like a big old Chin group Pat like that. And the Asian Assassins were started by Chinese and Vietnamese teenagers. Toronto has a significant population of Vietnamese Canadians. Back in 1975, okay. the Vietnam War was coming to an end. As a result, nearly 2 million Vietnamese refugees fled in order to escape persecution. An estimated 250,000 refugees died at sea due to their boats not being up to par. Others landed in refugee camps in various Southeast Asian countries, and from there, nearly 120,000 came to Canada between 1975 and 1982. A lot of these refugee children struggled with their academics, and their high school dropout rate was much higher compared to other groups. Huh, it's teachers common don't for these same groups to be don't affected be by poverty do. and gang culture, and that's exactly what happened here. Both the Chin Pack and Asian Assassins are considered to be street level thugs, but they have ties to the triads. And for this reason, both gangs are known to push a lot of firearms and a lot of narcotics in their area. But aside from these I ain't plays, never seen no gangster Asian before though. That's what's crazy. And you never either. Honest, be honest, bro. I'm not even trying to attack y'all culture or nothing. I'm not saying y'all ain't got them boys in there. But I'm saying I just personally never ran into a gangster Asian or a gangster Chinese ever in my life. I've never seen it, bro. And I rarely ever seen a, a, a Asian or a Japanese, I mean, Chinese person get aggressive. The only time I see is if I'm going to Chinese inner or something, trying to get my food and, and get it tweaking. 
Other than that, I ain't never seen him get aggressive either. These gangs have been involved in a gang war that is arguably one of the deadliest gang beefs the city of Toronto has ever seen. The murder of Michael. Michael Wen, the alleged former leader of the Asian Assassins, was targeted and gunned down <coughs> at the Yorkdale Shopping Center by three individuals Dang, that got them up in a silver Chevy Malibu hatchback in March of 2014. Michael and his homie were leaving the Yorkdale Mall after shopping, and as Michael attempted to get into his vehicle, three males began to open fire on Michael and his homie. Having Michael was ops. wounded and attempted to flee, Babe. but was chased down. Having ops, you can't go to the mall. Can't go get your hair done, cut, you know what I'm saying? If you do, you gotta be on point, point, or, you know, so you really just, you know, but I'm the two right there. You can't go to the mall, you can't go to the barber shop, dude. And the attack them the two spots that you really get caught up in, bro. Sure he was dead Facts. But this killing isn't the only killing that made headlines. This is not a random killing that was targeted. No, the father was the victim of a violent attack on Oh, but I said that old man better not kill him. He was shot multiple times after he opened the front door of the Simington Avenue home. The suspect fled in a dark colored minivan. His wife and another family they kill that her, was never named at the time were home. That man was 64. Luke Noah was the father of a known chip pack gang member named Tan No, and he was home when his father was shot. Tan was the intended target. But the shooters claimed his father's life instead. But the Asian assassins really Boy, wanted Tan dead. Look to see four years later, on March 19th, 2018, Tan was killed at a bowling alley located in North York. Two-year-old Tan No. I saw somebody at the front door screaming, and I heard gun, gun, cover, and then run, run like hell. He said cover, then run. Run like hell. Like hell. Fled in a dark vehicle. Right, folks, fun. Suggest no with Chin Pack, a gang that's been around in Toronto since the early 2000s. Stop bringing it's up his gang life, and, and, and celebrate what he had good going on. I can't even imagine what the family sure. must be feeling. But this just goes to show you that these beefs run deep. Somebody really wanted you dead if they came to finish the job after allegedly taking your father out instead. Ruma Amar, who was an innocent bystander, was also murdered this same night at the bowling alley. Tan and Ruma didn't know each other. She just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong That's time. That's how I be going. That's why I don't go outside for real. introduced you to her family. She was a daughter. She was a sister. She was a wife. She liked to party type of thing. Like clubs and bars. I don't do that no more. I don't go to those type of places because like <clears throat> when I started being there, I always realized like it's always a fight or something going on. Something crazy. Now, how easy is it for one crowd over on the left to get into a, a shootout and I'm coming out of them uh, the bar or something, the club, and I and see in the line of fire or anything, you know what I'm saying? Crazy that's going on. And they'd be like, is it really worth it? No. So I stay at the cribbing party. Or you know what I'm saying, tellies or something like that. On January 8th, 2014, Premier Huang, aka Primo, was shot and killed alongside his girlfriend, Brenda P, outside of a townhouse complex in the Richmond Hills area. Primo was a member of the Asian Assassins, and he was well known in his section. A rapper that goes by the name Manhuelli Stacks from Project Officials had a close relationship with Primo. They allegedly made a lot of money together and pissed off a lot of people in the process. So one can only speculate how that happened. Primo and Manhuelli definitely had some money plays going on. Manhuelli Stacks also has a whole song dedicated to Primo called Primo Gay, so you can tell they were quite close. Who is that? You put it on the, uh, what's the, that's XXB. Primo was allegedly involved in the drug trade, which is what ultimately took his life. On the night of January 8, 2014, Timothy Lee and Kevin Pham called Primo to deliver some weed to the Center Green Apartments, and that's when Lee and Pham ambushed Primo, killing him and his 16-year-old girlfriend. Kevin Pham was a member of the Chin Pack. 16? Dang, Primo, what you doing? You're 27, you nasty. Pham convinced Lee that it was a good idea to take Primo out, but after doing so, 
They have completely ghosted Timothy and moved somewhere in Vancouver. The story of how they got Timothy to confess to the murders of Premier Huang and Brenda is actually a crazy story within itself. It involved a whole team of undercover police that tricked well, Timothy no, into trusting no. them, which ultimately led to Timothy confessing to the murders of Premier and Brenda. Timothy Lee is now serving 25 years to life in prison. This is only a fraction of all the murders that's happened in the city of Toronto between these gangs because the beef goes way deep than just the Chin Pack and the Asian Assassins. Gangs that existed in these areas before had beefs and the Chin Pack and Asian Assassins some way or another adopted some of these beefs, but not entirely. But if you made it this far into the video, leave it a like if you want to see a part two. Gotcha. But this brings me back to my point that I've made in my I'm previous like video videos. Set up too. A lot of these gangs don't even realize why they're fighting. Good with them. That and the subscribe. war is only fueled by acts of revenge that almost have nothing to do with the original reason they're fighting in the first place. Innocent lives have been lost and I can't even imagine how Brenda's parents must feel losing their daughter at the age of 16. It's just tragic all around, but it's it's hard to be surprised because this is what comes with the lifestyle. Bloodshed and violence has become somewhat of a sport and social media is just how they keep score. But let me know what you guys think in the That's comment sections below. But until next time. People just look at death, I said it. People look at death like it's just nothing nowadays. It's crazy. Like it's just like, it's just too accepted to me. Like, death shouldn't be that, you know what I'm saying? But, let me know your thoughts down below. It's me, your boy, Jerry Oko.